Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises and labs to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our, web, to our website, aws-dozo.com, and you can implement uh, scenarios in the workshop and exercises to learn about AWS services. Today, we are going to talk about Global Accelerator uh, service, which is used for um, enhancing availability and performance of the application, especially if your users are globally distributed. So let's talk about a service a bit, and then we'll talk about what scenario we're going to implement. So uh, Global Accelerator is a service which primarily used to enhance the availability and performance of your application, especially if your users are uh, global. So for instance, you're deploying one application or set of applications and your users are uh, globally uh, distributed. Um, you can use Global Accelerator to uh, enhance availability and performance for such a distributed user groups. Uh, so the way it works is that in case of uh, multiple applications running across multiple regions, uh, it can provide an fixed entry point to your uh, to your users. So no matter where the users are in, uh, in the world, uh, they don't have to worry about individual endpoint. They get a fixed entry point. And based, based on that fixed entry point or static IP, uh, the users are directed to or writed to one of the uh, configured endpoint uh, suitable for their you know, regional access. Um, and the way uh, Global Accelerator enhances the performance of the application is by optimizing the, uh, the traffic path to the application. So to take an example that your application is deployed, say, um, in, um, in, in US or say in Europe, and your user is sitting somewhere in Sydney, in Australia, and, 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 and the user is trying to access the application, a Global Accelerator can optimize the path of the user access to the application all the way from, say, Australia to Europe, Australia to US, and improve the performance of the traffic as much as sometimes 60%, uh, which end up uh, uh, giving a better uh, end user experience as well as improve the performance of the application. So improving the performance part of the application is, is what I'm going to focus today. Uh, this multiple endpoint scenario, I will probably capture some in some other, uh, in some other exercise. So uh, let's discuss how does uh, AWS Global Accelerators improves the, the performance of the traffic to, to ultimately improve, improve the uh, end user experience and, perform and application performance. So take a scenario that suppose you're uh, going by the same example that suppose your application is deployed somewhere in Europe or US and the user is sitting somewhere in say Asia or Japan or uh, God knows in Australia. Uh, if the person is using internet to access the application, then the, the, the user has to hop in through multiple network to reach to the to regional endpoint and able to access the application. So the performance of the application's traffic is depends on uh, the speed you get here in uh, at the internet and the number of hops uh, it is going through. If you are using a global accelerator, the whole thing becomes pretty much smooth. Uh, because in this case, what is, what happens is that through your local ISP, you embark onto the edge location, and from there you use AWS Backbone service uh, to to reach to the endpoint. And then uh, when when AWS uh, uses the Backbone service, it again optimizes the path of this network to see which one is the fastest path, and that path it takes to um, make your request land at the application. So what happens if you try to compare these two diagrams? Here you're hopping between multiple uh, networks to uh, reach to your endpoint. In this case, you are simply uh, onboarding your request to um, AWS uh, Backbone network, and then AWS Backbone network is then giving you an optimized path to your application, uh, and that enhances uh, the performance of the traffic, hence your performance of the application and your user experience. 
So this is the scenario which we are going to see how, how to configure such scenario. I have done some testing with this scenario, like making my application sit inside Sydney and access from the Europe or vice versa. I have seen a really a significant uh, improvement uh, in, the, in, uh, in the performance of the application. And today I'm going to show you how, um, today I'm going to show you how such configuration can be done. Uh, and in fact, there's exercise for that, which you can run by your own as well. So what we are going to build in this case today, we are keeping it pretty simple. Uh, we'll have uh, an EC2 instance running in Ireland, um, and we'll simply go and deploy, deploy Apache Web on that. And funds, first of all, we will access this uh, endpoints over HTTP, over internet. And then what we'll do that we'll use a global accelerator to, uh, to, uh, to uh, optimize the path of access from US to Ireland. Um, uh, yeah, uh, using the AWS backbone. Uh, so this is the so first we'll create this environment, first environment where which can be accessed over internet, and then we'll set up the second environment where uh, the application is accessed uh, through a global accelerator. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not showing. I'm going. I'm going to compare the performance over here, but I have created few scripts in my. Yeah, when, while working with one of my customers where I try to check the, the performance of uh, the both uh, access, and I found global accelerator always better than going over internet. And you can very much uh, use uh, tools like POST and even making simple HTTP requests to your Python cell script to uh, test such endpoints. Cool. So uh, pretty simple, straightforward. First, we'll go and set up an Apache web server uh, in, in Ireland region so that uh, no, I, and we'll make this uh, publicly accessible. Uh, and then in the second scenario, we'll put this behind the global accelerator um, configuration. So let's see how it works. So in order to implement this scenario, we have an exercise, uh, and this exercise is published at aws-dozo.com. Uh, you can follow the instruction of the exercise to, um, to, to complete this scenario. So let me tell you, let me show you how uh, the uh, what are the steps involved in the exercise. So if you go to the exercise here, here the exercise is published to our aws-dozo.com website. This is the introduction about the scenario. So first step is the prerequisite, which is um, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. You need to have an AWS account. And if you don't have, you might want to use this link to create one trial account. After that, we are going to uh, actually create a role for the EC2 instance. And, and why I'm doing this, actually, it's not really mandatory here, but um, I'm going to create uh, an Apache web server, de deploy Apache web server on EC2, but I don't want to RDP to the EC2 instance. I want to use um, um, systems manager, session manager, uh, to, uh, to session manager to uh, do this job. And in order to um, use session manager, uh, we use uh, uh, systems manager's agent, and, and that needs uh, your role, your, your EC2 instance to have certain role. So that's what we are. That's what we are configuring here. We are creating this role only because we want to use System Manager, Session Manager tool, uh, for the deployment. So, so simply go and create a role, uh, and this role should have a, a permission call uh, Amazon uh, SSM Manager, uh, management, uh, sorry, managed instance code, and then we give this a nice name called say Dozo EC2 profile, and we save this role. Now time to launch an EC2 instance. Uh, so we are launching an EC2 instance. Uh, it's an Ubuntu uh, operating system, um, and then we are keeping a T2 micro machine so that we you know we stay under the um, free trial <laughs> free trial uses. Um, then we are putting inside a default VPC. Uh, so we'll, we'll have default VPC uh, really uh, uh, that will make it public automatically. Uh, and then we are saying, okay, let's uh, assign a public IP to it. Uh, and then uh, we are saying, uh, the, let's assign a role to it, which is your Dojo uh, EC2 profile we created in the earlier step. Then we uh, give, uh, yeah, we say DAX, we give it a nice name, say Dojo Web Server, and then we go to the security groups. Uh, since we are deploying um, an Apache Web Server, which we want to access over HTTP, we simply, we simply configure a, a security group saying that give this machine access over HTTP on port 80 from anywhere. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then after that, um, yeah, you simply launch the instance. And in this case, you can see that I'm not generating any key pair. 
to access the instance um, for a simple reason, because I'm going to use Session Manager to do all the deployment. I'm not going to do any RDP access or SSH access to this machine for the uh, for the deployments. I will simply use Session Manager, and for that, I don't need to generate any key pair. So uh, we simply uh, deploy it, uh, and then uh, we uh, wait till the machine is uh, ready. That means yes, two by two check has been passed. So once machine is ready, now we are going to use Session Manager uh, to install Apache Web Server. So we go to Systems Manager, uh, and then we click on the Session Manager, and then we click on the Start Session button. And there you can see your machine has been listed here. And this machine has been listed because it's, it, it is running with certain profile, and that profile enables machine to use a systems uh, SSM agent. OK, so we are simply selecting this machine and say, let's start the session. And you can see that I have got um, uh, a session uh, set up, uh, a console session set up with uh, the, the machine. So first, I run this uh, sudo uh, app get update uh, to uh, know, refresh the local software package database. And after that, I simply run sudo app get uh, install Apache 2, which will simply go and install Apache web server on my uh, Ubuntu machine. And then I simply terminate uh, the say, terminate the session. So my job was pretty straightforward, and for this job I didn't want to really create a key and then you no know, <laughs> SSH and do that. I say let's keep it simple. Use session manager to get this job done. So uh, my Apache is installed on my EC2 instance. Now if I try to access this EC2 instance using my uh, IP address, you can see here, uh, then yeah, I, I mean I get my Apache default page rendered. So my web server is ready. Now in actual production environment, guys, you will not simply have an EC2 instance which you are simply you no know, accessing over internet. Probably you will have a set of EC2 instances which are running through some auto scaling configuration, and then you are running it behind a load balancer. Um, uh, in that case, you do configuration with the load balancer. But I'm, I, I didn't try to create a load balancer here uh, because I want to keep the cost size is really low. So I'm going to show you how you configure a global accelerator with an EC2 endpoint. But if you try to configure your global accelerator with, say, a load balancer, then it is no different configuration. Yeah, It's the same configuration you go through what you see here or what you do here. Okay. Uh, so just want to uh, yeah, tell you that I'm, I'm not crazy here to you know, use EC2 instance directly over internet. Uh, ideally, I would like to put into behind a load balancer in a private subnet and uh, with auto scaling configure if need comes. Uh, but I'm, try I'm trying to keep uh, that thing, uh, avoid that thing here to keep the cost low. So next, we go and create a global accelerator. So my, my EC2 instance is uh, up and running. In fact, I can access this EC2 instance from anywhere over HTTP port. My web page is running, which is default Apache web page. Now, I want to configure it behind global accelerators so that when someone is accessing this website, they are not accessing through internet hopping, but they are accessing it using AWS backbone. Okay, AWS network backbone. So we create a, uh, for, we go to the global accelerator and say, I want to create one accelerator. Uh, it will ask you the name of the accelerator and everything. And then you want to add the listener that on what port your uh, your your accelerator should listen. And since my web page is listening at port 80, I say, okay, I simply go and listen at the port 80. And then you try to add, uh, add endpoint groups. Now, endpoint groups are regional groups, and one endpoint group can have multiple endpoint. And one uh, so endpoint so global accelerator can have multiple endpoint groups, and endpoint groups can have multiple endpoints. And actually, endpoint is nothing but the actual end web server or load balancer which you are pointing to. Okay, so you can configure really multiple endpoint groups and multiple endpoint, especially if you are trying if you have multiple um, uh, regional deployment of your web server and you want to do some smart routing between them, uh, some kind of weighted routing between them uh, to increase the high availability as well as provide a, a single uh, address to access the application worldwide, you, you go for this kind of uh, multiple endpoint and endpoint group configuration. In fact, I'm planning to do one exercise separately for that. But here we simply say, I want to create one endpoint group. And, and, and since my web server is running inside um, Ireland region, I simply select Ireland region over here. 
And then I want to add an, uh, an endpoint. Uh, and uh, and when I come to endpoint, actually, uh, again, here in this case, it will be one endpoint. Uh, I, I simply go here and say, okay, I want to an uh, endpoint for this group. And this endpoint is an EC2 instance. Now, if you go and click over here, you can see the con uh, choices where you can uh, yeah, configure the load balancer as well. And that's what you will do in a real uh, no, <laughs> production deployment. But here in this case, since I have an EC2 instance, I simply um, no, um, um, I simply configure my EC2 instance. So I'm saying this is my EC2 instance where I want to route my traffic uh, or, or configure as a as a as a as an endpoint for my accelerator. And this is the machine. Uh, this is the instance ID. And then after that, you it's pretty straightforward. You simply say I want to create the accelerator, uh, and and it will start creation of the accelerator, which can take a couple of minutes. So you have to probably wait for that. So once the status of the accelerator changes to deploy then uh, yeah your things are ready and then at that point of time your glo global accelerator gives you a dns name and a static ip and this is the ip which um, uh, which can be used to now access the same application but when you're accessing through this dns or static ip then you're accessing it uh, uh, accessing it using aws backbone network Okay, and think of a in multi regional regional deployment scenario. If you have like multiple uh, same application deployed into multiple regions, when you configure the global accelerator, um, you don't need to uh, don't need to access those application using the individual endpoints because you can you can simply go and access through this DNS name here, and based on how the routing have configured the routing or the or weights, your 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 application will be available to you through one of the endpoints. But you don't need to remember; you have one one entry point to every endpoint in your uh, of your application. But here in this case, uh, yeah, it was single endpoint and single endpoint group, and all we said that okay, let's configure a global accelerator so that when you access the application via this URL, uh, global accelerator URL, uh, DNS or static IP, then the traffic does not hop through the internet, but it goes through AWS backbone network. And yeah, and then you can see that I'm, I'm trying to access this application again through uh, through uh, the global accelerator. Same Apache uh, Ubuntu default page comes, but this time this page has not been served over the internet, but it has been served to me through um, through AWS um, uh, backbone uh, backbone network. Okay, so that was all uh, the exercise. I wanted to show you here the how how simple it is. To put your um, your your load balancer, your web applications behind a global accelerator and use the use the global network of AWS to enhance uh, the performance of the traffic to the application, uh, which will end up actually improving the performance of the application and the user user experience. Finally, the last step is to clean up the resources so that you don't um, don't incur any cost. Uh, post this uh, exercise. So that was all for the for the exercise uh, today. Um, I hope you liked the video, and if you like, please click on the like button. Uh, please subscribe to our channel to learn, to to you know, to get uh, notifications about uh, uh, many you know, similar videos. Uh, uh, we try to publish uh, at least at least at least two videos per week for sure. Um, there are many other workshops and exercises uh, which you can uh, access at our website aws-dojo.com. Uh, yeah, feel free to uh, go through these exercises to learn about uh, AWS uh, services. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, or if you have any request for a new content, either you can provide us uh, that feedback on our YouTube channel, or you can also reach out to us through this contact us button. So that was all for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please let me know. Uh, have a nice day and have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.